Good afternoon, Chairman Kushner, Porter, and Ranking Members Minor and Paletta. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to come and testify to you today uh, on SB 356, which is an act requiring a study concerning a German apprenticeship and training program. Um, we all know what's been happening in the state of Connecticut. Uh, this, bill, this bill attempts to provide for a more in-depth look into how we can trans transition in to an apprenticeship program that's similar to the successful programs that are occurring both in Germany and Switzerland. Uh, here in Connecticut, we need to make sure that we show to both the workforce and the business community that we're serious about providing an alternative education path that provides students with skills and also people that wish to switch careers, perhaps midlife. These multiple paths to employment do not necessarily involve higher education. And we're scheduled to speak to the Higher Education Committee on another bill which would, uh, would help push this along. And I would suggest that currently schools are rated on the amount of success they have moving students to higher education colleges and universities. There's no spot yet to determine a rating for apprenticeship programs in that mix. So we hope to provide for that opportunity so that um, we can transition people to a good workforce. In Germany and Switzerland, these opportunities exist for a couple of days of work, a couple of days of higher education. It's a joint public-private partnership, uh, and it's very successful. We're doing that with manufacturing here, but we think the purpose of this bill is to expand it into other industries uh, and to raise awareness that this possibility has happened. For example, that I just gave, there's a number of guidance counselors uh, who don't talk about trades, who don't talk about moving through the community college system because uh, they're more uh, mindful of what's happening in higher education. So that's what we're here to talk about. We hope that, uh, that this committee will con consider moving that forward because we think there's a big, big need. It's been successful in both South Carolina and Virginia uh, here uh, on multiple industries. And uh, we hope to, to be able to move Connecticut to the next level and fill some of these job openings that we have. Yes, good afternoon to the chairs and ranking members and committee members. Um, I am here to speak on uh, SB 356, which is the potential study requiring us to look at um, what other countries do for apprenticeship programs. And I spent um, a, one week uh, a month for my career overseas, so I have been able to see firsthand what other countries do as far as apprenticeship programs for um, their young people. And in many of the countries that we're speaking of here, Germany and Switzerland, they have very unique programs that they work with industry to train their young folks. Um, there is some differences. They do tend to track their young students by fourth grade. But by fifth grade equivalency here, Students are exposed to different trades, um, different technologies, and they are active. And they, once they enter into the apprenticeship program, as uh, Senator Formica was speaking to, they work a few days in industry, and then they go to school on the other days. They actually do go to school on Saturday, too, which is, I know, a lot different than here. And they take public transportation to school. but. Um, I think it's an opportunity for us here in Connecticut. One of the things that I have been um, very focused on is similar to what Senator Formica had said. We, we rate on how many children we send to college, and there's this big push for college. And I know that my daughter, older daughter, uh, would have been served much better should she have gone to a technical high school or been able to get herself into an apprenticeship program. And I think that we are actually um, leaving kids behind. It's a disservice for some children in the fact that they're not provided a skill. I think it's our responsibility um, as the state of Connecticut to educate, but education doesn't have to mean going to college. It means giving you a skill that you have that you can grow upon to be able to support yourself and get a good paying job. And if we can look at what other countries are doing coupled with states 
South Carolina, Virginia, that have looked at these models, we could provide opportunities for kids that have no opportunities now. And things that are um, on these tracks are things like um, audiologists, cardiovascular technicians, um, a dental hygienists, clinical officers, quality inspectors. These are good, high-paying jobs. And I think that right now, uh, because we have a shrinking workforce here in Connecticut, if we want to maintain our younger people that are graduating, this would give them yet another option that they could have. They could enter into these programs, graduate with a certificate, be able to go into a good paying job and not have to incur the debt that college leaves so many of our young people with. And again, if they want to continue on in college, that would be terrific if that's their choice, but we're not leaving them behind. We're not giving the, them the option of the military or college. There's something else in between, and it gives us an opportunity as Connecticut to talk about the fact that trades and other jobs are good quality paying jobs and that they're opportunities for all. So I strongly um, support this effort and I hope that you will consider moving this along because it is just a study and I think we can get a lot of good data out of it. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am State Senator Henry Martin and I'm here also to support the uh, SB, is it 365? 365. 356. Uh, I've been involved with uh, my local chamber of commerce for quite a few years. I, I grew up in a construction family business. Uh, after graduating college, I uh, went home to the family business. And uh, currently, I am a real estate broker in the uh, Bristol area. Uh, what I saw on the, in the, in the uh, while I was on the chamber board, for many years, uh, manufacturing businesses in particular uh, and trade businesses were battling to keep the uh, technical schools open when budget cuts were threatening for their closure. Uh, having won that battle, and I think it's, uh, I think all of us can say that uh, if you go to any technical schools today, they're filled, and there's a high level of demand for them, uh, for spaces actually. But today's battle is really a lack of supply in our skilled workforce. You know, we've, we hear, we've heard from the manufacturing sector, there's a, between 11 and 13,000 current jobs that are available for high advanced manufacturing skills. In addition, which is somewhat off the radar, and the reason why we are here, is that there's an additional 25,000 jobs in healthcare, finance, and as well as the architectural and engineering uh, vocations alone, and that's not even count in the trades. So what we're experiencing is a potential employment crisis ahead of us. In the past few years, the manufacturing sector have taken the lead with local chambers and community stakeholders in developing various apprenticeship programs. They've been very successful to a point where in 2016, this legislature charged the Commissioner of Education in collaboration with the Board of Higher Ed to establish a committee that was made up of the Department of Economic, uh, Economic and Community Development, the Labor Department, the Center of Advanced Technologies, Technical High School Advisors, uh, and representatives of the business and in manufacturing community specifically. It compiled a catalog of programs throughout the state of these apprenticeship programs, and it, it analyzed and it came up with some uh, findings and uh, the it compiled a catalog uh, like I said of the programs that existed in the state and it analyzed whether these current programs were meeting workforce needs one of the committee con uh, one of the committee's conclusions reported the students in Connecticut manufacturing train programs to have increased opportunities for work related experiences prior to employment, and that is interns, to provide internships and pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs. It also concluded, uh, another conclusion that they had was, it stated that manufacturers st stated this, that the need for developing manufacturing as a career in, in public school systems, advocating for manufacturing careers and promoting manufacturing as well to the community stakeholders. And they mentioned getting to the children in middle school as well as the high schools and then eventually connecting them with our higher education. This committee was specific, by, uh, was, was specific to manufacturing only. 
And this bill, though, is looking to expand that enter, uh, uh, apprenticeship program to other careers, to uh, career sectors. And we really don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can turn to the models that are in Europe with Germany and Switzerland that have already had this into play and who are currently preparing their students for the work for the work field. So I think I lost my last part of my my notes, but I think you're getting the gist of what we're trying to accomplish here. Let's put a, a study together, give us gather some information so that we can develop an uh, apprenticeship program so that we can match the needs to the workforce needs uh, to the, uh, to the uh, business community that have the need for these highly skilled jobs. Thank you. Um, 